One of the pieces of advice that's given out to writers is write about what you know. Steve Almond has written about what he knows. His book is called Candy Freak, A Journey Through the Chocolate Underbelly of America. This is sort of a history of lost and forgotten and out of the mainstream candy companies, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's not just write what you know, it's write what you love, write what you're obsessed about, write what you almost fetishize. And so for me, that was candy. And uh, the more you find out about the candy industry, the more you realize there are three big companies, Mars, Hershey, Hershey's, Hershey's, and Nestle, and then there are a bunch of little guys. And I was really interested in the little companies that make little regional candy bars. These little guys are not the ones that we're familiar with. They're not the you know Reese's and M&M's and Milky Ways and all that. Uh, how do they even survive, given the, the marketing cloud of the giants? Well, they survive because they're so small, they're not worth buying out or putting out of business is the, the real answer. So they have such a small market segment. For instance, the uh, Idaho Spud is a candy out of Boise, Idaho. Well, they're the fourth leading candy bar seller in South Dakota. Okay, so Big Mars market. isn't exactly shaking in their boots. So, uh, How did you go about researching this? Did you travel around, go to these companies? What did you do besides eating vast quantities of candy? Yeah, well, the main reason, of course, to write the book was to eat the vast uh, uh, quantities of candy. But what I did was a very complicated methodology. I basically emailed all of these companies and begged them to let me come visit their factories. And about a dozen of them were foolish enough to say, okay, sure, you know. Oh, I'm writing a book, I told them. Which was true, but I didn't exactly have a book proposal. I just was a candy freak who wanted to go see candy being produced. Did they kind of raise their eyebrows and say, kind of a nut are you? Or, yeah. or what, did they take you seriously? Well, they did. They, but the beautiful thing about small regional candy companies or any kind of small company is they'll let you in. You know, I talked to the presidents of these companies and they showed me around their plant and they were happy to. I mean, they probably shouldn't have for insurance reasons. You know, I could have gotten hurt or something. But they were just like, sure, yeah, you're writing a book, sounds good. We're awfully proud of our spud bar. You know, that was their attitude, so. And this is the spud bar, right? The, the famous Idaho spud bar? Absolutely, yeah. What's, what's the deal with this? Well, it's a delicious potato enrobed, no, it's not potato. It's, it's marshmallow enrobed in a chocolate and sprinkled with uh, coconut. The coconut depositor sprinkles coconut on it. And so I have to say that candy production is beautiful to watch. The coconut floating down was like watching a little snowstorm. It's also childproof, which might be the reason you're having trouble How many, there. Well, it's certainly, you know, numb anchor proof. Uh, <laughs> whoa, we it's had, a bit of a yeah, mess, too. Yeah, how, many, a, how many candy bars do you eat a week? Or not just bars, but candies do you eat a week, Steve? Well, I, uh, you're going to have to ask that. I probably eat about 10. Now, what you're having there is a marshmallow that's made with agar-agar. Most marshmallows made with gelatin, and this is made with a seaweed derivative called agar-agar. It doesn't taste like seaweed, I hope. No? No, it's flavored with uh, maple and cocoa, so it has a little bit of a richer flavor, and it's got a consistency more like tofu. And that's kind of a slightly dark chocolate with, with coconut around it. How is that? Are you suffering? That's Are you okay? That's okay. It's, it's not bad. Okay, well, we have another here. So I should have brought some milk. Yeah, we've got another one to, that we're going to try. Absolutely. Um, when you're out promoting promoting the book, yeah. what kind of people show up? You're doing a lot of bookstore appearances, yeah. and, and are these people like you, are they candy freaks? Are they nuts about candy, and they are just overjoyed to yes. meet someone like you? Yes, I, I think of myself as sort of the chief enabler of this candy, tree, uh, candy freak tribe. Uh, they're really wonderful people, and they're all different ages, because we give away candy. We give away the candies that I wrote about, the Valamilk, the Idaho Spud, the Twin Bing from Sioux City, Iowa. Twin Bing? Twin Bing. Little cherry cream covered in chocolate and peanuts, delicious bar, but you can only get it in Sioux City, Iowa, or the environs. So. All-time favorite, what's at the top of the list? Well, the all-time favorite is Caravelle, which no longer exists. Delicious Peter Paul Caravelle was discontinued like most candy bar brands. You know, there have been 100,000 candy bar brands introduced in this country in the history of candy bars, which is really only about 100 years old, because every city used to have a confectioner, and they all used to crank out new brands every year. So. So the Caravelle, but it was discontinued. Now it's the Kit Kat Dark, which is actually made by Hershey's and Nestle, but it's a limited edition, so you can't find it all the time. Are there any regional specialties here in New England? The, absolutely, the Needham is, now there's several different varieties of Needham, which is, uh, people think it's because you need to eat them, you need them, but it's actually named after the evangelical preacher George S. Needham, who was a famous uh, evangelical preacher, and he had a big following, and I guess he was a candy freak because uh, they introduce these candy bars, which is usually, it it's varies from place to place where they make them, but it's usually dark chocolate around coconut. So.
I know that you're, you're focusing on the small, the, the, the little guys here. Yeah. But among the big, well-known candy bars, what's your favorite? Well, as I say, I think my favorite is the Kit Kat Dark, which is a Kit Kat bar enrobed in dark chocolate, and the dark chocolate is insanely good. It, it's like a Dove bar chocolate. It melts real quickly, and it's slightly sweeter than bittersweet. It's right. absolutely delicious. Very quickly, we're going to try these. These are the ones that explode at high altitude? Yes, this is the Vallow Milk. It's made uh, by Cypher. Good thing we're only on the second floor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's usually, it usually has a warning on the label to avoid. Uh, it's, it, it's really messy bar, just so you know. That's a vanilla syrup and uh, you're doing actually quite well with it. It's made outside Kansas City, and it's a vanilla syrup inside a very, very creamy milk chocolate. Steve, how many cavities do you have? Uh, well, actually, at this point, my cavities have cavities, so it sort of makes the count more complicated. But people say this to me sometimes. They say, well, gee, aren't you worried about getting cavities? And I'm like, it's, uh, it's already over for me. <laughs> I've already got all the cavities, so. The name of the book is Candy Freak. The author is Steve Almond. It's available anywhere. And if you want more information, just go to our website, WCSH6.com. Click on the 207 icon, and you will get more about this. And we will be back. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you for this. It didn't explode. <laughs> I'm so happy. Back with more of 207 right after this.